good review of our week at family camp. Good morning, St. Louis. Two weeks ago, I had the privilege of being installed in the outdoor service space as your vicar. That's just a fancy seminary word for an intern, or not quite a pastor. And my first task was to go with this lovely group of my new St. Bees family to family camp. There were shared meals and laughter, all the wonderful things you saw, worship games, and lots of conversations about life and faith. And it made me think of something in the Bible. In Acts 2, we have this tiny little glimpse in verses 44 to 47 of the earliest church, right after Pentecost. And it says, all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home and ate the food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. So this picture of the early church shows that they were all together. And at family camp, we were indeed all together. Sometimes I had a little trouble figuring out which kids went to which parents because they were all sitting with their friends and enjoying meals and other time together. We had time in temple, or daily worship time while we were there, and time in homes. We stayed in cabins or in lodges. There were great rooms where games could happen. You should ask Pastor Steve about his exploding kittens. And my favorite spot was the rocking chairs on the porches for some good reading and good conversation. And of course, we ate together three times a day, plus snacks. There are some studies that were done by the Effective Camp Research Project that looked specifically at church camp. There's an image there. It's up on your PowerPoint there. Um, the five key characteristics of church camps that they looked at included being different from home, getting away from our normal space, our normal routines. It puts us in a different mindset, a different heart set for hearing and understanding things differently. But faith-centered, faith permeated every part of our day, from prayer at meals to the conversations we had to daily worship. It's a safe space. It's relational. Do you know why Camp Nawakwa is so relational? Because none of our cell phones worked. There's no Wi-Fi, no signal. We had to talk to each other. And participatory. Songs, skits, we were part of what was happening all day. Silly, competitive, but together. So these key characteristics specifically of church camp, this uh, research project looked at lasting effects. So they interviewed and talked to some uh, young adults, 30s, 40s, and those that had participated in some kind of church camp were more likely to express a belief in the value of belonging to a church or a belief that they could turn to people in church in times of need. They said they were more likely to have personal devotional practices like Bible study, prayer, conversations about faith or attending church, and more likely to participate in group Bible studies or group parachurch groups or to be active in their church. So these are all great things. I'm not suggesting, however, that we all move to Camp Nawakwa and live there full time, or set up tents out in the parking lot and live here like the early church. You know, it didn't exactly work out perfectly for them. That was three, four verses, and just a chapter or two later, they were already having issues. 
But this time away, this putting aside our life, this intentional being a family is something that even later in the Bible, in the book of Acts, with Paul and the early church leaders in the letters, this family model continues to be something held up as a model for the church. The, the church members refer to each other as brothers and sisters. Our inclusion, our baptism is referred to as adoption, as sons and daughters of God. In fact, I would go so far as to say this image of family, this relationality, is just like God's very self in the Trinity. God, Jesus refers to as his father. Jesus is the son and our brother. And the spirit has some very feminine images. Proverbs calls her woman wisdom and says she was present at creation in the birth of creation. Our sister was baptized into the spirit and into the birth of creation in new birth in baptism this morning, as were most of us, if not all. Jesus was asked in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I hear Jesus saying that loving God leads us to loving others, to living in caring relationships. Our loving relationship with God overflows in our love for each other, the brothers and sisters that God has given us to be church together, to live and grow and share and invite others into the kingdom of God on earth and into the family of St. Bartholomew's. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Amen.